I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to Tech Talk. This edition, we're going to be looking at some different effects in live, and how they can be combined to turn a drum break into a richly textured bass line. So you can see how effects can be used in more interesting ways to create new sonic possibilities. So let's crack on with it. Here's our drum break then. I've taken one from Loopmaster's KJ Sorka Live Drum Sample Pack. What we're going to do first to turn this into a pitch, rather than a drum sound, is to add some oscillation. And the way we're going to do that is to add a very small delay with lots of feedback. This will mean the signal is being looped continuously at high speed, and the speed of the loop creates a pitch. So let's turn on simple delay and deactivate sync, then set the time of the loop to a small value. If I change the time to a lower value, hear how the pitch rises. That's our pitch created. Now let's use one of Live's newer effects to really add some character. The effect is called Frequency Shifter, and it can do a lot more than just shift the frequency. One of the things it can do is to add tremolo, which is when the level goes up and down. This occurs when the effect is in ring modulator mode, with the ring modulator frequency kept low, and then some of the dry signal brought back in. The lower the dry-wet balance, the less prominent the effect. Another facility available on Frequency Shifter is a drive engine. This can be cranked up to make the sound much fatter and more distorted. The next effect is Grain Delay. This effect delays very small segments of an audio signal, as well as allowing them to be pitch shifted. There's a few things you can do with this one, but what we're going to do first is to set the delay to a very small amount, and the dry-wet balance to 100%. This means the delay is just shifting the whole signal by an inaudible amount, so it doesn't appear to be doing much. The reason for this is I want to use the effect for other purposes. First, hear how the pitch and frequency can be adjusted to create some interesting patterns with our track. Another thing we can do here is to use the effect's random pitch variation to add some more width. We have to keep the frequency low, and the pitch at zero, to make this subtle. Then the constant changes in pitch provide a unique character that sound like a more interesting chorus of some kind. I'm also going to add some EQ to boost the bass, and also add a bit more clarity at the top end. Now let's sort the dynamics out. There are many ways you can make the level more interesting, but a popular way is to use a compressor with a sidechain fed by a drums track. This not only creates variations in level with our bass line, but also means that the level goes down when certain drums sound, which makes the drums stand out more. First though, I'm sticking a limiter in there to squash the whole signal, so that there is less variation in the dynamics before the signal passes onto the compressor. Then, the compressor here has the sidechain being fed by a new drum track. Now, when we play our process track, you can hear how the level goes up and down, rather than all staying at one level. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to stick another frequency shifter on the end. This time, it's going to be used in straight shift mode, 
to adjust the frequency at various points. The fine dial is the one to use, as the main frequency dial creates too large a shift, as opposed to the fine dial's smaller range of an octave or so either side. Now we can add the unprocessed drums track over the top, and you can hear the new bass line in all its glory. So you can see how effects can be used to totally transform a loop's character. Tune in next time, where I'll show you how you can take this one stage further by creating new pitching and performance options for this bass line using Live's envelopes and effects racks. <laughs>